I did realize that when I said see you for swallowing next, it sounds kind of strange, but see you for swallowing problems associated with stroke next. Hopefully that sounds a little bit better. Um, and so anyway, um, the other issue I brought up before is that like when you're talking about muscle strength, motor stuff, that we also have muscles in our face, our mouth, our tongue, our throat, um, our neck, and all of these can become weak after a stroke and it can lead to speech issues and can also lead to swallowing issues. Um, there's less tone um, and usually there's an affected side. So remember we talked about left brain, um, that they have right body weakness and right brain, they have left body right brain, I'm sorry, left brain, right body weakness, right brain, left body weakness. There we go. Um, and so this also includes the face. And so this is where I talked about another video about pocketing. Um, and pocketing is where like literally think of like a chipmunk that's storing food. Um, what do you call it? I mean, it's the same kind of thing. Effectively, one side of the face can be completely paralyzed where it can't even like chew or swallow things and so, um, you know process things. So stuff just kind of starts to pile up like a chipmunk in that side. Um, so that's pocketing. So this is why we always want to check in a patient's mouth after they eat to make sure that their uh, mouth is clear because it may seem like they're swallowing and you'd be surprised what you find in people's mouths. Um, so anyway, the, to know where a person would be pocketing, if they had a left hemisphere or left brain stroke, remember the right side is weak. So if my right side is weak, which side of their mouth do I want to put food in? Do I want to put it on the weak side or do I want to put it on the strong side? I want to put it on the strong side. So think of it this way. Um, they're going to pocket the opposite side um, from where they had their stroke in their brain. So if it's left, they pocket on the right. If it's right, they pocket on the left. Um, so what the side that I actually want to feed them on, if you had, a, there's, a, there's two separate questions, where are they going to pocket? Where do you want to feed them? I want to feed them on the side that they're strong on. So if I've had a left hemispheric stroke, I'm weak over here. So I actually want to feed them on the left. So whatever side they had their stroke, that's actually where you want to feed them. So left hemisphere, whatever hemisphere that they had their stroke, like left hemisphere or left brain, um, I want to feed them on their left because their right is weak. Then right hemisphere or right brain, they're weak on their left. So I want to feed them on their right. So pretty much think they're going to pocket the opposite. I need to feed them on the same side um, that they had their stroke. Um, and then just some terminology for you here is dysphagia. And keep in mind, I remember dysphagia like this. It's like phagocytosis or the G, I think gulping or um, I was going to say griping, but that doesn't work. Um, I think um, phagocytosis, if you remember, that's like the process of um, digesting, but then also G, I think gulping is for, um, it's a swallowing process. Cause we also have dysphagia that sounds, sounds exactly the same, except there's an S here and it's a speech thing. So as remember G is for gulping. So here's a scenario. A nurse is giving instructions to a patient care technician regarding feeding a stroke client that is struggling with dysphagia. What information should the nurse provide the PCT in regard to feeding a client with dysphagia? So um, if I am feeding a client um, with dysphagia or like I'm delegating feeding a client with dysphagia, this client can have special needs. So I want to think about if I have someone who has weakness in their face and possibly in their swallowing, like what I'll need to do. Well, of course, one, I would want to, you know, double check their orders, make sure that they are, um, uh, what do you call it, what their diet is, make sure that the PCT is aware of what their diet is. And everyone might have different setup, but some of the general things that are usually included for a patient that has dysphagia is going to be things like they need to sit up really high. We actually prefer them like up in a chair, but we, we love them like 90 degrees. Um, but if nothing else, they have to be at least 60 degrees. They need to be super high. Now, remember when we talked about increased ICP, I said uh, we don't want them very high. Now that's in the acute period. Once we get to this chronic period, we are trying to prevent aspiration. We are not messing around. 90 degrees is fine. Um, so we don't like high head of bed for ICP, but um, in the beginning, like that acute phase, but later on it is okay. Um, so head of bed up. Um, want to know their diet orders, if there's any special consistencies. Um, so some patients um, with um, stroke, like you might think like, oh, we're going to puree everything. They've actually strangely found, not strangely, I think it's kind of cool, um, but they found that people that um, 
do puree diet, sometimes it actually, their swallowing can be worse because there's not enough texture and there's not enough flavor a lot of times to make, um, the body needs so much texture and flavor to want to swallow things. And so uh, in order to like have a better experience and have a better chance of swallowing well, this patient is going to need to um, they're going to need to ensure that there's enough texture and flavor to the foods. So doing stuff like a softer diet might be helpful, but they don't necessarily need a puree diet. Um, and so that's something I would just want to check on. Um, other things that sometimes, uh, you know, I would just want to make sure that the, that if there's any specific orders, like some patients with, um, uh, some patients that have had a stroke, they're not allowed to do thin liquids. They have to do thickened liquids. Um, some patients that are not allowed to have straws. So it just kind of depends on, um, whatever is um, most appropriate for this patient. I'm trying to think if there's any other big things. I think I'll get it. I'm probably going to remember um, as soon as I get here. Um, so eff uh, supporting effective swallowing, I'm going to assess for a gag reflex or do a, a, you know, a swallow evaluation. That's me as the nurse, like a tech cannot do that. Now I'm going to do a basic assessment if I think the patient's safe, but if I am like a set, like if I have a patient that's had a stroke and I'm just like talking to them and they can barely talk to me, they don't have good speech abilities. Like that's already kind of a red flag for me. If they can't speak well, if they're uh, completely like they globally cannot speak at all, like that's like a red flag. Like, like ding, ding, ding. This patient is probably, if they can't speak, they're probably not safe. They probably don't have the muscle tone to swallow. Um, so if I'm not sure, I'm not going to chance it and I'll put in a speech therapy evaluation, um, but not every hospital has as many capabilities. So if I can do a bedside um, assessment, I will, but it just kind of depends. So, but in general, no matter what, I'm not going to um, feed someone until I've done a gag reflex or swallow evaluation. And usually this is pretty simple. I'll take like a little medicine cup, pour a little bit of water in it and have them try to um, swallow that and see how they do. The signs that they're doing well is like, there's no sounds, no change in their lung sounds, no change in their oxygen saturations, um, things like that. But if they're starting to like cough a lot or there's change in their lung sounds, their oxygen saturations are going down. Those are all signs that they're not tolerating it very well. Um, then, um, like I already talked about, uh, and so, so it, like, I will do that like, real quick. Um, so I'll do that bedside swallow evaluation for the patient. If they pass it, you know, I can start them out on some clear liquids and, um, things like that, or talk to the doctor about starting them on that. And then we'll, when I say clear liquids, we might start them on like full liquids or soft. It just depends on the patient, but we'll usually advance their diet per the doctor's orders. Um, and then if I ever have a concern, I can get speech therapy of, um, involved. So I had a patient um, not so long ago had a spinal injury and this wasn't even about a stroke, but you know, he had some neurological stuff going on, obviously. And um, they had done a swallow on him, um, like uh, the bed, a bedside one. And they said he was doing fine. But when I came in and, you know, I was giving him drinks, like it was very obvious he was not swallowing well. Like it was gurgling in the back of his throat. His lungs started to get more coarse. His chest x-ray was changing. And so that's when, like I told the next nurse, I was like, he needs a formal speech evaluation. So don't ever hesitate if you, especially, you know, if you work in a facility that has one, know that they're very overwhelmed. They can't come and see every single patient. Not every patient needs a formal speech therapy evaluation, but if you have concerns or you're not sure, don't chance it. Um, so I talked about is like, you need to have enough texture, temperature, and flavor to stimulate the swallow reflex. So you definitely want to be sure um, that, you know, like, don't, don't always think that just like the softer, smoother it is, the better it is. Sometimes you need so much um, thickness in order to stimulate that swallow reflex. Um, thin liquids are usually avoided in these patients because it's usually too thin. It goes down too quick. Their um, weak muscles cannot tolerate the, or cannot manage them because it's too fast. So usually we use thickener like in this picture. And we're going to place the food on the unaffected side. And remember, the unaffected side is going to be whatever is the same side of, of the, the same hemisphere that their stroke was in. So if they had a left hemispheric stroke, we feed them on their left side. If they had a right hemispheric stroke, we feed them on their right side. Because remember, it's always weak on the opposite, strong on the same. Um, oral hygiene is key. We really want to um, keep a close eye on um, how they're, um, they're doing cause they can pocket or, you know, hold on to more food. So they'll be more likely to get bacteria or, um, you know, be retaining that in their mouth. Um, if they're unable to take PO, like nutrition is so key for healing from a stroke. So, um, some patients may end up with a peg tube or parenteral nutrition, which we'll learn about soon. 
um, and then we're going to assess their respiratory status frequently. Um, so we're going to be watching for any changes because that's usually going to be signs that they're aspirating. Um, I talked to you about having the head of bed elevated. Um, we like it high at 60 to 90 degrees or that we like them sitting up. And then something else we can tell them, um, the book talks about a few different things. It talks about we don't want, we, um, we can kind of like put flexion in their neck to, I want to say it's going to be like this. Like, I think we kind of have them like, um, like, cause I've seen, I've seen speech therapists do it before where I think that we kind of, when we have them swallow, we actually have them put like chin to chest and stuff like that. And there's something about that that helps with the swallow reflex. And then also we have them swallowed twice. And what that, um, what that does is sometimes like their muscles are weaker. Um, so they have to like do it twice. So think of like when you have to flush twice, because you want to make sure, um, you know, that everything goes down. Like when you have a big bowel movement anyway. That's a fun way to end this one. Next one's about communication, which apparently I need a class in.